So the first presentation is going to be um, Dr. Camille Hunter, one of our senior residents. Um, she's going to be talking about or exploring the possible myth elderly patients with atrial fibrillation and high fall risk should not be anticoagulated. Thank you, Dr. Freed. So here's just the background and relevance. You guys all had a big show of hands. We know that this is really common. Um, we know that lots of old patients have AFib. As patients get older, their risk of stroke increases, but also their risk of bleed increases. And we know that the risk of falls also increases with age. Elderly people are, have about one in three chance of falling every year if they're in the community. And that number is even higher in skilled nursing facility patients. So we do know that it's well established. Anticoagulation reduces risk of stroke in patients with AFib by about two thirds. But the big question is, is that the same in patients who are high fall risk? Because pretty much all of the randomized control trials excluded patients with high fall risk. So we don't have great data on that. And the current practice, exactly what we saw here today, is that treatment, of, treatment with anticoagulation for patients with AFib actually decreases with age of the patient. And the most frequent reason that physicians say that they're not anticoagulating someone is because of, of a perceived bleeding risk, especially falls, and risk of intracranial hemorrhage. So these are just the two risk calculators that we often use, but as you can see here, neither of these have fall risk, especially has bled. Fall risk is not on there. Um, and as you can see, both of them have age as a risk factor. So we know that age increases risk of stroke and increases risk of bleed. So we need to dig deeper to see um, does fall risk play into this. So um, I want to start with this trial. This is a randomized control trial called the BAFTA trial. And this is a trial that looked at warfarin versus low-dose aspirin, aspirin for the prevention of stroke in elderly community um, dwelling adults who had AFib. And they looked at about 970 patients who are at least 75 years old with EKG proven AFib. They randomized them to two groups, either warfarin or low dose aspirin. And the primary endpoint they were looking at was fatal or disabling stroke, whether ischemic or hemorrhagic, as well as intracranial hemorrhage and clinically significant arterial embolism. Um, they had some exclusion criteria, as you can see here, which is basically other contraindications to anticoagulation. They followed these patients for 2.7 years, and the key finding here was that the patients on the warfarin had significantly less strokes, total strokes, than patients on aspirin, and they had the same number of bleeds. So my take home point of this is that if you're not gonna give someone warfarin, Putting them on a low-dose aspirin is not doing them any favors because it prevents less strokes and has the same risk of bleed. And so this is just the results here. You can see, sorry, it's kind of small, but the things that I underlined is just that um, total stroke, especially ischemic stroke, is statistically significantly better in the warfarin group. And then all cause mortality and all major hemorrhagic, uh, all major hemorrhages as well as hemorrhagic stroke is not different in the two groups, not statistically different. This is another study that um, came out in 2015. This is a prospective observational cohort study, and it's really just a statistical estimation. It's a statistical analysis. So what they did in this study was they used um, risk calculators, CHADS2-VASC and HASBLED, as well as a Kaplan-Meier curve to estimate um, survival function over time using lifetime data. And so, they looked at about 9,000 hospitalized patients with AFib, um, about half of which were elderly and over, elderly over 75, and then half of the patients were younger for reference. And they basically compared um, what would be the overall survival data, as well as stroke and major bleeding risk, if the patients were on warfarin, if the patients were on antiplatelet therapy, or on neither. And 
Um, I'll just kind of explain this. It's a little bit hard to see. So what you're looking at here is all-cause mortality um, in different groups. So the top two lines here show um, the all-cause mortality in patients who are under 65 with or without warfarin. And so those lines are pretty close together, but the patients under 75 with warfarin did better in terms of all-cause mortality. And then the lower two lines, this is where it gets interesting and important, is lower two lines are patients over 75 with or without aspirin. And you can see that um, the patients who were, I'm sorry, um, I meant to say warfarin, not aspirin. Um, so the patients who are over 75 and who were on warfarin had significantly better all-cause mortality in this estimation. Um, they also found just that the patients on warfarin had less strokes than the other two groups, and warfarin and aspirin carry the same amount of bleeding risk, and no therapy has the least bleeding risk, which is not surprising. So my summary here was just that um, stati this statistical analysis suggests that patients who have AFib and are over 75 especially have a net all-cause mortality benefit from being anticoagulated. So those two studies are basically telling us that advanced age itself is not a contraindication to anticoagulation. But neither of those studies addressed fall risk, which is what we're really trying to get to. So let's try to get down to that. Um, this is a study um, that came out in 2005, intracranial hemorrhage. It's looking at the intracranial um, hemorrhage incidence in patients with AFib who are prone to fall. This was a prospective cohort study. They looked at um, 1,200 patients um, who were at high risk of fall and another 1,800 patients who had AFib. And the way they defined their fall risk here was that the PCP had to have documented in the electronic medical, me medical record something that said either frequent falls, history of falls, multiple falls, or tendency for falls. And they kind of validated this method of deciding who is fall risk by the fact that the patients who were deemed fall risk had twice as many documented falls and twice as many um, fractures. So hopefully that's um, roughly um, accurate way to determine the fall risk of these people. And this study uh, looked at the incidence of intracranial hemorrhage, stroke, MI, and death during the follow-up period, and they actually kind of lumped those together into a composite endpoint. And what they found is that high, uh, high fall risk was associated with increased risk for intracranial hemorrhage, but that risk was so small. So the risk of intracranial hemorrhage is very, very tiny compared to the risk of an ischemic stroke. And what they did here is they separated the patients uh, by CHAD score. So the patients who are low risk of stroke, so with a CHAD score of zero or one, they actually did not do better on warfarin, which is consistent with pretty much all of our guidelines. And then patients who had a CHAD score of two or greater who are at higher risk of fall, which by the way is pretty much anybody who's over 75 um, and has any other issue, um, those patients had a significant um, better, significantly better hazard ratio on warfarin. So in terms of that composite endpoint um, that I mentioned before. Here's another study. This is also um, like a statistical analysis model. Um, it's called the Markov decision model. Probably all of you know more about statistics than I do, but it's basically a decision, mod uh, a decision model using a cohort um, and doing a simulation based on a lot of data that we have. And so this study <clears throat> looked at um, antithrombotic therapy in elderly patients with AFib who are at high risk of falls. Uh, so their cohort that they looked at here, um, AFib, over 65, no other major contraindications to coagulation, um, at average risk of fall who are living in the community. 
And the way they kind of used all of their input variables is that they estimated stroke probability using results from five other randomized control trials specific to patients over 65. They estimated the risk of intracranial hemorrhage um, by looking at some other randomized control trials and some cohort studies. And then they estimated risk of fall by using data from seven prospective cohort studies looking at about um, 2,000 adults. And so they, they assigned patients um, a fall risk based on certain risk factors. And I can get into that later if you guys want to know about it. But um, they, so they had this cohort of people and they looked at what their outcomes would be in three different options. So either warfarin, aspirin, or no therapy. And here's what they found. They found for the entire cohort of people, warfarin was the optimum treatment um, in terms of quality adjusted life years, regardless of fall risk. Um, they also separated this out in terms of um, annual stroke risk, and anybody with an annual stroke risk of greater than 2% per year um, did the best on warfarin. And then they also separated out patients who are 75 and older, and in that group of people, the warfarin group also had the best quality adjusted life year outcome on warfarin. Um, so just some interesting uh, things for the falls here. They looked at um, data for 2,500 falls altogether. And out of 2,500 falls um, of people on anticoagulation, only one of them resulted in a subdural hemorrhage. And then they looked at the, the relative risk of falling of, and getting a subdural hemorrhage. And what they found is, yes, people who fall have a slightly higher risk of getting a subdural hematoma or a subdural uh, subdural uh, hematoma, but that risk is so, so small. So you can see these numbers, 0 0.00023, that translates to um, a patient on warfarin who is not a high fall risk would have about a 1 in 6,000 chance of getting a subdural, and if that patient is the same patient with a high fall risk, their, their risk of getting a subdural would be 1 in 4,000. So 1 in 4,000 versus 1 in 6,000. It's a very low risk. And um, yeah, as I said before, the probability of falls had no influence on the optimum therapy. So they kind of changed the input variables to vary fall risk from zero to 100%. And they found that no matter what the fall risk was, warfarin was still the option with the highest quality adjusted life years. And this is just kind of some math to play with, but they looked at, well, what would it take for warfarin not to be the best choice? And example for subdural, patient would have to have a 300, or sorry, a 535 fold higher risk of subdural to make warfarin not the best choice. And so if you kind of mix up the math there, that would mean a patient would have to fall 295 times every year for warfarin not to be the best choice in terms of overall stroke prevention weighed against bleeding. Um, okay, last study, and I'll wrap it up pretty soon. This is a prospective cohort study looking at 515 adults who were DC'd from a hospital on oral anticoagulants. And um, the outcome that they were looking at in this study was time to first major bleed within a 12-month follow-up period. And what they found that out of the 500 people, 35 of them had a first major bleed during the follow-up period. Um, little over half of them were at high risk of falls, which is defined by a survey that was given to the patients. And only three major bleeds occurred directly after a fall. And that's an incidence rate of about uh, 0.6 per 100 patient years. Um, so they did a multivariate analysis here using that data, and they found that high fall risk was not statistically significantly associated with an increased risk of major bleed. So hazard ratio was 1.09, but the confidence interval <coughs> included one. So that was not a significant difference between fall risk or no fall risk. And you can see here, this is just their data here, um, 
the patients who are high risk of falls and low risk of falls, their time to first bleeding is about the same. So this is kind of my summary of the studies that we've talked about. Um, so the first study taught us that aspirin prevents fewer strokes but incurs the same bleeding risk as warfarin in this group of people. And then we also saw that a statistical analysis suggested that there is a net all-cause mortality benefit for these patients on warfarin versus no warfarin. And um, another study showed us that for patients with AFib, fall risk, and a chance of at least two, warfarin is protective against a composite endpoint of stroke, intracranial hemorrhage, MI, and death. Another analytic model showed us that uh, warfarin is the optimal treatment for these patients regardless of fall risk. And finally, the last study showed us that oral anticoagulants did not significantly change the risk of major bleeds in these patients. So my view is that I think fall risk is not an absolute contraindication to anticoagulation. And uh, many elderly patients with AFib and high fall risk, especially those who are at high risk of ischemic stroke, would still benefit from being anticoagulated. Oh, and this is, um, this is my grandma and her friend from grammar school. They're both 81, and my grandma has AFib. So this is an example of one of our patients. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks. Oh, stay here. All right. Are there oh, yeah, questions. questions or comments? Great presentation, Camille. What are you choosing to anticoagulate your elderly patients with these days, given the fact that these studies were all done with warfarin? Yeah. That is exactly true. And unfortunately, in this specific group of patients for this specific question, there aren't any studies about the NOACs. But I think that we have enough evidence to say that in most cases, NOACs are just as good as warfarin. And we do know that especially in elderly patients, like low-dose Eliquis is a really good choice. So I think if we try to bring all of our data together, that that would be a good choice, but there's not clear data yet on the NOACs in this population, a fall risk anyway. I think in general, though, the, <clears throat> the studies that have come out on NOACs have generally um, demonstrated a decreased bleeding risk compared to warfarin, just in, a, in major populations that have been studied, not in this specific one. Have they done any studies subgroups, the, the elderly and the elderly, their line will be on a, a, an naproxen or an ibuprofen? Which yeah, definitely. NSAIDs is an independent risk factor for bleeds, um, pretty much in all of, all of those studies, especially, um, I think it was this, this study um, that, uh, sorry, don't quote me on this, I think it was this one that um, being concomitantly on aspirin or concomitantly on an NSAID is also an independent risk factor for major bleed. Uh, the other ones that were statistically significant in this study were female and polypharmacy. It's time to vote. So is it a myth? Uh, elderly patients with atrial fibrillation and high fall risk should not be anticoagulated. Is this, how many people believe that uh, that statement is true, that People with high, based on what you've seen now, um, high fall risk patients with AFib shouldn't be anticoagulated. How many think it's plausible? A couple. You weren't here the whole time, though, were you? <laughs> I was here the whole time. Oh, you were. Okay, I didn't see you come in. Observational cohort studies where there is potentially bias. Right. Absolutely. That's true. We don't have any RCTs. <laughs> but the best data that we have shows that it probably shouldn't. Matter. Um, it's so, not, it's not placebo. How many, how many think this is busted? <laughs> All right. Well, then. Uh, busted. <laughs>